let's get there step by step. The first step, which I want to take, is that we make sure that when we favorite a product, we actually only do that for ourselves and not for everyone. So therefore, in the product dart file, where we send the request to mark a product as a favorite, here, I actually will send this to a different URL. And that different URL could be user favorites, whatever you want to name it. Then I want to have a dynamic segment here with the user ID so that we have a subfolder for that user ID only. And then in there, yet another folder or another entry, so to say, with the product ID. So actually I need two IDs now. This here is the product ID, but I also need the user ID. Now, since I get the token here as an argument, it makes sense to also get the user ID as an argument here. And then this would be the thing I wanna use here. So this is the user ID. We now need to ensure that this reaches this method here in the product item.dart file as a second argument. And of course we can go to our off dart file in the providers folder because in there we have the user ID. We're setting that ID when a user is logged in. We're setting it here. So all we have to do is add a getter. Let's add a getter here, user ID. And here I'll not really add a long check. We could check if the user is authenticated and otherwise return null, but it's kind of redundant here. So I'll just return user ID like this. Let's go back to the product item dart file and therefore now we can access off data user ID here now. So I'm now sending this into toggle favorite status and here this request should now be sent somewhere else. Let's give this a try. Let's again log in here like this and let's ignore what we see here as a status with the hearts. Let's press the favorite button here. And on Firebase, you should, you should see that you now have a new user favorites folder with a new entry and that actually should be the ID of your user. Let's kind of remember it. Starts with VTF0. Let's go to authentication. Yeah, VTF0, that looks pretty good to me. So that clearly is our user ID. So back to the database data. In that folder, we have another entry for that product we set is favorite to true. Now, actually, this is kind of a redundant entry. Sending a post request there is not really what I want to do. I don't want to append new values there all the time when we switch our status. Instead, I want to override the existing status. So now instead of sending a patch request here, which was good for the old approach where we stored this together with the other product data, now we can send a put request here. Because now I really just want to send true or false as a value. So we'll just send is favorite, which is true or false, and not in curly braces, but just as a standalone value, still encoded to JSON, but other than that as a standalone value. So now let me actually clear that entry and let's save that and let's see what this now generates when we use put and just send true or false. So again, real quick, let's log in here. And yes, this is annoying, we'll fix it later. And let's press this heart again. And now you see we have a new entry where we simply have that ID, which is the product ID here, if you want to compare it, and set to true. If I press that heart again, it's updated to false. This now works, but of course we now also have to, to take this into account when we fetch our products. Because now the favorite status will not be included in the product anymore, and I will already delete it from there, because it simply shouldn't be part of our product data anymore. The favorite status is not part of the products anymore. So back in our code, that means that when we add a product, here in product start, when we add a product, of course, I'll no longer add is favorite to the data we submit because a new product on the server should no longer have a favorite status. And it also means that when we fetch products, we of course also want to fetch data for the favorite status. And we haven't done this thus far. So here in fetch and set products, besides fetching a list of products, we also want to fetch the favorite statuses. And I want to do that before I transform my product data. So actually, 
here. I don't want to do that if we have no product, so I'll wait for this check. But after this check, it's time for another request where we get our favorite response or whatever you want to call it, where we await another HTTP GET request. But now the URL here will be this URL, of course, which we have in the product.dart file, where we send that favorite status to. So we can copy it from there. Token is now named off token here. And we're not looking for a specific product ID, but instead I want to fetch all favorite information for the logged in user. Now the user ID is not an information I have in here, but just like the off token, we could of course expect to get this here. So we can expect to have the user ID here and maybe get this as a second argument, if you will. And then we just have to go to the main Dart file again and ensure that we receive the user ID here. So now here for the products constructor, we also forward off.userID as a second argument. Now we have the user ID here and therefore we can also use it here in this request. And I shouldn't name this URL because this is final. I'm overriding it. Let me turn this into a var up there, remove final down there and simply overwrite the URL because we only need it for this request and then we can assign a new value for this request. So now I get all the favorite data for all products that this user favorited or marked as a favorite. This should of course be a response. So now for creating our products here, which we then store locally, we have to take that data into account, which we get back here. And what we will get back, of course, will be in the end, a map where we have key value pairs, where the key should be product IDs and values should be true or false. So a pretty trivial map, which we get back. So I'll create my favorite data here and there I will JSON decode the favorite response body. That will be the map I just described. Here, where we create the products, when I assign the favorite status, we no longer get that from the prod data, but from the favorite data. And there I just explained, we'll have keys which match our product IDs, and then the value will be false or true. So I just have to access the prod ID here, and I should be good to go. Now, a check is required though. For one, I want to check if favorite data is equal to null. If that is the case, then this user has never favorited anything. So then obviously every product will just be not a favorite. So we set this to false. Only if uh, the user has some favorite data, we can check for that product ID. But that product ID still might not exist. If we find no entry for prod ID, this here will be null. Now, if it is null, I want to use an alternative value. We can do this with the double question mark operator, which simply checks whether that is null. If it's not null, it will use that value. And if it is null, it will fall back to the value after the double question marks, and that would be false as well. So if favorite data is null, or if we find no entry for that ID, we'll set it to false. Otherwise, we'll use that entry which we find. And that should now actually load our products such that it takes the favorite data we store here into account. So with it all saved, we can reload the app and log back in here. And now let's see, this reloads and none of that is a favorite. And that makes sense because we only have one entry and that is set to false. So even though we have an entry for one product, it's false. Let's switch this to a favorite here. And it's true therefore. And then let's reload that page here by simply revisiting it. And now this is loaded correctly. If I switch both to a favorite and I reload, it should load and fill out both hearts right from the start. If I clear that and I re reload, only the book should be a favorite. So this seems to work and we're now storing our favorites on a per user basis. So that if a different user logs in, which I can demonstrate by refreshing the app and logging in with that second user I also created earlier, if we now log in here with test2 at test.com, which is my other user, then here we should also be able to load all the products, of course. But if we do so, we see two empty hearts, even though one product is a favorite, but it's a favorite of the other user. So that's how we scope 
the favorite mode or status to our user, let's now make sure that the products themselves also belong to users and that on the manage products page, we really only find the products that we own.